Hi everyone, my name is Barish. I am an artist and an art facilitator, and I have been working with children for the last 25 years. And today, I will be talking about, of course, the children, and in the context of art. We, as a society, as adults, usually consider art as a luxury. In times of any kind of crisis, art gets to be eliminated or put aside in the beginning. It is not seen as a must, it is just as an add-on. I would like to challenge this idea. When I look back in history, history of the people, starting from the cave times till today, we have had horrible things happen to us. We started wars, we killed millions of people, we had natural disasters that killed millions of people. There were really, really bad diseases and plagues. So it's not a very fun history that we have. But when I look at it, I have not found a part, a period of time that did not have art in it. Art was always there. What happened to the idea of it was a luxury? Like one of the examples would be from Picasso, a great artist everyone considers. One of his most important works is actually Guernica. It is a time of crisis in Spain. A very bad war is going on. And it's one of the bad parts of that war he puts into art. And now that art is a great piece of art that we enjoy and we look at, we try to understand and we learn from. So, this makes me think that art is not a luxury, but it's actually a big need. Because we didn't even stop when people were dying. We didn't even stop when we were hungry. We didn't even sp stop when we were fighting a war. We did it. We did it. We didn't stop doing it. So history tells us that it is actually a big need. But why? Why is it a big need? There is a personal side of it, too. As each human being, we are connected with art in a very different way. I see it, I see it kind of like a ready-made ice cream cone. In the beginning of our lives, mostly when we are all children, we love to do art. Given a pencil, a paint, we will start doing and drawing and painting, and we will not, never stop. And we love doing it, and we will enjoy it. That's kind of the part of that ready-made ice cream cone. Like, on the top, there's a big chunk of chocolate and it tastes great, believe me, I know. And that chunk of chocolate ends. Kind of, in our lives, when our childhood starts to end, when we go through schooling. When school starts, life starts. And unfortunately, I am very sorry to say that, we kind of start putting art aside. It starts to lose its importance. We go through life, and that's part of that ready-made ice cream, the ice cream part, which I'm not even sure if it's ice cream. Uh, we go through it, and towards the end of the cone, like it's like in our lives, towards uh, the life that we get mature, we do a lot of things with life, we have financial stability, we have uh, people around us, and when we look up back in ourselves, we, almost all of us, want to go back to art. We want to dance, we want to go build something, we want to paint, we want to sculpt, we want to sing, a, a, a form of art that we really want to go back to. And in that ice cream cone, it's the last part. When you think of it, that last part has something really tasty too. And it's not a surprise, it has chocolate in it. So I think this is an exact version of the, our personal relationship with art and that ice cream cone. So why is it? Why are we so deeply and intensely related to art? Why can't we stop doing it? And I think it's because of us. But what are we? What are we really made of? I really think about it a lot. And uh, the reason I think about it is that I work with children. I see them how they enjoy art. And uh, I could come up with two, uh, three 
very basic and bare bone elements that makes us us. And the whole thing came out from the experiences that I have learned from children in the last 25 years. And I did learn a lot. One thing is that we all, you two too, you two, have a physical being. As you can see, I have a lot. We also have an emotional being. We have an emotional self. And we also have a thinking self. These three pieces come together and something happens that even not math can explain. Because in math, you know, when you combine three things, combination, permutation, whatever, you get a specific number of results. But in humans, in people, you combine these three, at the moment you get about eight billion. If you go back to history of people, that's the number of results that you will get. Yes. When we are born, we are one and only. There is no one like us. And I do hope that you feel this way. You are the only person living just like yourself in this whole wide world. So I think that's why we are deeply immersed and connected to art. Because when we <coughs> make art, we use not the materials, not the paints, not the clay, not the notes. We use ourselves. We use our full being. And that's what makes it very special for us. But I do think it's great that we use ourselves when we make art. But I did ask children some other uh, question too. But before going to that, I want to talk about what art is. I did get an answer from a 11-year-old boy from Mardin, Kifiltepe, but I would like to start with the adult version of it. The adult version is easy. It's using different materials and techniques to express ourselves, our ideas, our emotions in a different way. That is kind of like a consensus that we have about art. And it's correct. I mean, it's usable. But it doesn't have that wow factor. I mean, art deserves that wow factor. And I got it from this 11-year-old from Mardin Kizultepe. And I have to say, we're in a school building, and it's not just like this one. Of course, it's not like this one. It was a public school, and uh, these 11-year-olds that I was working with, I asked them the same question, what art is, which is a hard question for them, for all of us, actually. So I made it very easy and plain for them. What do you think art is? If one would say, I, I think ice cream is art, I would say, yes, of course, it's his or her idea. So I let them play with the ideas. And this one kid raised his hand, and he, he gave this, for me, perfect explanation of art. And I will use a Turkish word in that, which I will try to translate into English, because it's hard to do that. It's a very specific and powerful Turkish word. He said, art is something you do with all of yourself. It's something you do. He's not giving me what art is. He's giving me what art should be done with. It should be done with all in. You don't put a part of yourself back. You go all in when you make art. That's what, what makes art very powerful and nice. And that's, I do believe it's really great. So let's get back to children, because I did ask them another question about art. So if you want to become an artist, can you become an artist? Wow. The answer was devastating. About 80% of the children said no. And we talked about art in the way that I just talked about. And I would say, yes, we can all become artists. No, they said 80% said no. So can I see hands only, the ones that are talented, can you please raise your hand in the artistic manner? If we, in art, if you feel that you're talented, please raise your hand. I want to see hands. OK, maybe not. <laughs> OK, uh, about, I'll tell you, about, Less than 10% has raised their hands. So 
So I understand about 90% of the audience here is not talented. And I think that does make you feel bad about it. And this is what happens to children. They told me, I asked them, why? Why do you think not all of us cannot become artists? And they said, you need to have talent. And I said, OK, what is talent? Again, I will give you the adult version of it first. It is uh, in a classroom, in an art class, you put an object, and you let all the children look at the object and make a drawing out of it. Among all those children, one or two, not more, one or two, will make that object exactly the way it is. It will make it very much alike the object. And if you put those drawings on the floor and ask any adult, unfortunately, and I'm sorry to say that mostly art teachers, and ask them which ones are the ones that are talented. And they will point out the ones that were made just like the object, that looked like the object. This is very strange because I did ask what art was to so many different people. Till now, maybe more than 50,000 people. None of them gave me an answer including talent in it. None of them told me, you need to have the talent to do it. But when it comes to becoming an artist, that's the first thing it comes up in your face. You have to have talent. And I'll tell you, with all the experiences that I have had, with all the children and adults that I work with and seen, that is not talent. That is so wrong. We are crushing children under that notion, and it is not right for them. And I can give you an example why it's not right. Everyone is seeing that object, but why are not everyone drawing it the way it is? Because it is like sports. Your eyes see it, if you can't see it, you put on your glasses and you see it. The arm, the neurons, the brain, they are not that well connected. But it's like a sport. The more you work on it, the better it will get. And all of us, all of us, can get to a point to draw that object exactly the way it is. And I can, you can ask yourself, think about your childhood. Do you draw the same way you did when you were five? No. We get back better as we grow up. We get better control of, of our hands, of our fingers, and it will get better. So, but some people do it faster, I have to say, and it's because we are all different. But, and that's, that's perfectly fine. But the problem is, with this idea of talent, and the children learn from us, we are crushing them. And I asked them, what is talent if this is not it? And they did give me an answer, actually. This boy, 10-year-old boy in Gaziant at this time, gave me a great explanation of talent. Uh, and he said, it is something I have, no one else has. I have, no one else has. What a great explanation. So if we are all different, if we are born different, if we are unique, then we have something none of the 8 billion living people has. Then what makes art great is that we go into art and we celebrate that thing that makes us different from all others and we can do it the way we want it to be. For me, art is like Mevlana. It's like, come, come. Whatever you are, whoever you are, come. You are welcome. Are we welcome? To the children, no. Because of that talent issue, no. They don't feel welcome. On the power art of art notion, we use that power in a very mistaken way. We use it to crash them. And about 90% of children, just like the ones that we are, uh, we, the ones that they raise their hands, the 10% feels good and happy, and they go through their school life wanting to make art, and while making art, they actually become better people. But 90% 
they don't want to make art because they don't feel uh, happy in making art, they don't feel talented, they don't feel successful. That's what we make them feel. And that's not the power of art. The power of art should be something much more different. It should not be about discrimination. We don't teach discrimination at schools. We teach the other way. We don't want them to discriminate. It is very, very, very bad. We teach them this. And then we love to discriminate when it comes to art. We say that 10%, you're good. 19, 90%, useless. It is very wrong. The power of art should be not to discriminate 90%. It should be welcoming and inviting 100% of the children to make better themselves. When we all make art, we use ourselves fully. We become better people. We become better thinkers, critical thinkers. We learn how to solve problems in our own way. We become better emotionally. We do use our emotions when we make art. We become better social people, easier to communicate. We become physically better, better hand skills. We become mentally better because we solve problems throughout the whole art making process. We become a better version of ourselves. We use our full potential to learn when making art. And of course, we learn to see life through our own and our own different eyes. So it gives us a great and different perspective, our own perspective. Thank you.